Hello, I'm Dr. Stanley Cohen from the Department of Internal Medicine at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School, and I'm Medical Director of Metroplex Clinical Research Center in Dallas, Texas. On behalf of the authors in this video, I'm going to discuss two papers that report the 48-week Voltaire RA study and the 48-week Voltaire RA Open Label Extension Study published in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases and Expert Opinion on Biological Therapy. These studies compared head-to-head -head the biosimilar adalimumab BI695501 with the reference product in a clinical population with rheumatoid arthritis. Before discussing the two studies, we will briefly consider what a biosimilar is and the rigorous development process that led to these clinical trials. The FDA defines a biosimilar as a biological product that is highly similar to and has no clinically meaningful differences in safety and effectiveness to an existing FDA-approved reference product. The high degree of similarity includes molecular structure, purity, and potency, which translate into similar safety and effectiveness for the patients. Biosimilars have the same mechanism of action and route of administration as their reference product. The main reason to develop and use biosimilars is to increase competition, which should reduce the cost of biological therapies and help to improve access to these therapies for patients. Adalimumab is a biologic treatment for several immune-mediated inflammatory diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. BI695501 is adalimumab biosimilar that was FDA approved in 2017 as biosimilar to its reference product. The bioequivalence of BI695501 to the reference product was demonstrated in healthy volunteers in the Voltaire PK study. An additional study, the Voltaire X, enabled BI695501 to be the first biosimilar of a TNF alpha inhibitor to achieve interchangeable designation to its reference product in the United States. These studies are part of the stepwise approach to biosimilar development. Before a biosimilar can be evaluated in clinical trial, it undergoes rigorous testing that is set out by the FDA. A manufacturer must establish that the minor differences between the biosimilar and the reference product have no impact on the function of the molecule and do not result in clinically meaningful differences. When evaluating a biosimilar, the FDA considers the totality of evidence and in order to obtain FDA approval as an adalimumab biosimilar, BI695501 had to follow this regulatory process. A large amount of preclinical research is done to demonstrate a highly similar structure between the biosimilar and the reference product. As part of the approval process, at least one clinical trial must be completed with the biosimilar for one or more of the indications for which the product is licensed. This trial must demonstrate biosimilarity, including pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and immunogenicity. As previously discussed, the Voltaire PK study and the Voltaire X study were part of the stepwise development process for BI695501. In the rest of the video, we will be discussing the results of the Voltaire RA and the Voltaire RA extension studies, which are pivotal phase three trials that were required for the biosimilar approval process set out by the FDA. The aim of the Voltaire RA study was to demonstrate clinical equivalence of the biosimilar adalimumab with the reference product by comparing efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity. The extension study evaluated the long-term safety, efficacy, pharmacokinetics, and immunogenicity of the biosimilar adalimumab patients who had completed the Voltaire RA study. The Voltaire RA study was a multinational, multi-center, randomized, parallel arm, double-blind study. Participants had moderate to severe active rheumatoid arthritis and were on stable treatment with methotrexate. Participants were excluded if they'd had previous treatment for rheumatoid arthritis with adalimumab or more than one other biologic. Other exclusion criteria included active infection, hypersensitivity reactions, or adverse events in relation to the use of agents similar to the study drugs. Patients were randomized to receive either the biosimilar or the reference product, both at a dose of 40 milligrams. Treatment was administered subcutaneously via pre-filled syringe every other week by blinded trial personnel, either on-site or at the patient's home. At week 24, patients on the reference product were re-randomized to either continue on the same treatment or switch to the biosimilar until week 41. Patients on the biosimilar were dummy re-randomized and all continued on the same treatment. The main endpoints in the Voltaire RA and extension study evaluated efficacy and safety. The first composite efficacy measure was the ACR20. 
The second measure of efficacy was the 28 Joint Disease Activity Score, or DAS-28, at week 12 and 24 versus baseline. As part of the scores, we have used the ESR as an inflammatory marker. For the safety evaluation, all patients were assessed by the investigators for the development of treatment emergent adverse events. The co-primary endpoints were the proportion of patients achieving ACR20 in weeks 12 and 24. Equivalence between the two agents was demonstrated if the confidence intervals for the differences in ACR20 response rates were within the predefined margin. The changes from baseline and DAS-28 ESR at weeks 12 and 24 was also evaluated as secondary and was assessed using an analysis of covariance model. Following a screening of 940 patients, a total of 645 participants entered the Voltaire RA study. The patients were randomized to receive biosimilar elimumab or the reference plot. At week 24, 593 patients were re-randomized to continue on the biosimilar or to continue with the reference plot, or to switch to the biosimilar. 13.3% of the randomized patients left the trial early before 48 weeks. There were no differences in rates of treatment or trial discontinuations between the treatment groups. Voltaire RA extension was a 48-week open-label multi-center extension study that included patients with moderate to severely active rheumatoid arthritis who completed the Voltaire RA study who wished to continue treatment with the biosimilar adalimumab. Patients were included following assessment by the investigator. Participants were excluded from the extension study if they had experienced any drug-related serious adverse events, other acquired disorders, infections, or hypersensitivity events during the Voltaire RA study. Patients were also excluded if they had significant or uncontrolled disease other than rheumatoid arthritis or were taking any other treatment. For the extension study, the primary endpoint was the proportion of patients with drug-related adverse events as assessed by the investigator. The secondary efficacy endpoints evaluated efficacy in the same way as the original study. The extension study also evaluated ACR and ULR remission rates and the ACR 2050-70 response at week 48. Following screening of 479 patients that completed the Voltaire RA study, 430 continued the extension study. Overall, 90.2% of patients completed the trial and 93.7% completed the safety follow-up. Baseline characteristics were similar among the treatment groups in both studies. The Voltaire RA study showed similar efficacy for biosimilar adalimumab and the reference product after 48 weeks. These results were confirmed by sensitivity analysis, secondary endpoints, and exploratory Patients who responded in the initial study continued to respond in the extension study, indicating that the initial efficacy is maintained over time. In the Voltaire RA study, for safety, there were no major differences in safety between the biosimilar or the reference product. In the extension study, a similar proportion of patients with investigator-assessed drug-related treatment emerging adverse events were reported across the three treatment groups. Importantly, the type and frequency of adverse events observed were consistent with the known safety profiles of biosimilar adalimumab in the reference plot. One death was reported, although this was not deemed to be related to the study. The majority of the adverse events reported were non-serious of, of mild or moderate intensity. Serious adverse events were reported infrequently, 6% in the extension study. This was similar to the rate reported for Voltaire RA, with a rate of 7%. Another important aspect of evaluating a biosimilar agent is to look at immunogenicity. In view of this, a highly sensitive and drug-tolerant anti-drug antibody assay was developed. Our findings show similar immunogenicity between the biosimilar and the reference product in both studies. Furthermore, blinded switching from the reference product to the biosimilar did not lead to increased immunogenicity or more hypersensitive reactions compared with patients who continued on the reference product. In the pharmacokinetic assessment, plasma concentrations of both drugs were shown to have reached steady state by the end of the Voltaire RA study. The extension study showed that plasma concentrations of both agents were maintained until week 98. As expected, these levels declined after the last administration of week 108, which was 10 weeks after the last administration of biosimilar adalimumab. 
Mean drug plasma concentrations were comparable across Voltaire RA and the extension study, indicating that switching treatment does not affect drug plasma concentration. The Voltaire RA and extension studies demonstrated the clinical equivalence of the biosimilar adalimumab and the reference product in participants with moderate to severely active rheumatoid arthritis. During this treatment period, the efficacy of treatment was maintained. Importantly, safety and tolerability profiles were similar between groups, and no new side effects were identified with biosimilar adalimumab. 